everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie Franchuli for Wahoo's 24-7. And after taking a little bit of a break and talking basketball on Monday episodes, we're back to football today. We're going to discuss Virginia's Georgia Tech game on Thursday night, where the Cavaliers are looking for the first ACC win of the season. And they want to get their first road win since last year's road win against Louisville. Um, and also their first win on the road after a bye week since 2012 against NC State. So Tony Elliott was back in front of the media on Monday, and one of the biggest topics was mentally where this team is coming out of the bye week, how fresh they are, because they are banged up. One thing that a lot of people were telling us, and Tony Elliott as well, is this team was banged up heading to the bye week. And honestly, the bye week couldn't have come at a better time. If you remember back against Louisville, Nick Jackson hurt his knee. Josh Ahern was also hurt. The linebacker unit quickly thinned out against the Cardinals. So this week allowed those guys to get better. Now, Josh Ahern is expected to be out against Georgia Tech. Nick Jackson is expected to go back home to Atlanta and play against the Yellow Jackets, but he is not 100%, and he probably will not have that snap load that you expect from one of the best tacklers in the ACC. So we'll dive into the personnel a little bit in this episode, but that's what the bye week was about. Self-scouting, both all the coaches trying to see what worked, what didn't work, how to get this team to play consistently. The players go again, self-scout, try to figure out what is the issue. Why hasn't this offense come together? What is going on where this offensive unit, this wide receiver group leads the country in drops? How can they play all four quarters and how can they score points? They're fourth in the ACC in total offense, but they haven't been able to convert those yardage in the, into points. Those are the things that they focused on this week. And one of the big things that stood out when you talked to Tony Elliott on Monday was about what he was trying to impart on this team. And that is they are a team and not individuals. Being honest and realistic with ourselves and, and owning the fact that we've underachieved uh, based off of what our, what our talent is. And so what's the gap? And the gap is we need to be a team. You know, we got to come together and we got to, uh, we all got to do our job. You know, we can't, we can't uh, put all of the uh, pressure on one side of the ball. We went to go see Bullet Train and there's a part in the movie where the guys, uh, the elder statesman makes a comment. He says, either we work together or we die as individuals, which is very similar to what Al Pacino says. Either we heal as a team or we die as individuals. And so that's, that's kind of been some of the things that are happening you know, to us when we haven't been successful is that, A, we're dying as individuals because we're not healing as a team. We're not coming together as a team. We've got 11 guys on the field. We've got nine of them doing it right. We've got two of them doing it wrong, right? And that's what cost you plays in a game, right? Or one guy uh, has a bad play. Well, then now it turns into six bad plays by other guys, you know? So, so just learning the concept of, of being able to pick each other up moving on to the next play, but ultimately understanding that teams win. Uh, and we talked about college football this weekend. I think I was looking at the top 25, and there were six top 25 matchups. And only one of them did the higher seed win, and that was Michigan beat uh, Penn State, right? The other five games, the lower seed won. And so, fellas, you got to play the game. It doesn't matter who's the more talented team. It's the team that shows up, right, and plays together that, that usually wins football games. So, Elliot – going in there with some Al Pacino from any given Sunday, trying to inspire this team as they look to flip this season. And that's something that a lot of the players we spoke to on Monday and Tuesday after practice have said. They believe they can turn things around. And Chico Bennett, a former Georgia Tech player, said it perfectly. This is a must-win game for Virginia. Uh, guys know that, like, you know, we got, we got six games left, and those six games are going to fly by, so it's what you make it. Um, we got that. We had that bye week to reflect on it. Um, so now we got to attack, and we got, if we we got a buy in, and uh, we can win out, we can win these six games. It's just it's on us. And, you know, everybody wants to win. I also think that's a uh, it's a that's a it's a must win because you know a lot of guys are looking forward to. A lot of guys are hungry. 
um, especially, you know, with the second half of the season. So I think that this is a good starting point. Um, which, you know, will take us on for the rest of the uh, games that we got. That, you know, first half of the season's over. Now we can either, you know, develop or stay the same. So, um, and we plan on, you know, flipping the second half of the season the way we want it to. Possible to turn it around. And we, we are going to turn it around. That's that's our, our mindset to attack this. And, yes, we're frustrated because we let a game get away. We was in control of it there in the first quarter and it had a bad second quarter there and we didn't recover from it. So yeah, very frustrated from that, but that's another growing opportunity for us as an offense and as a team. And I like the way we've attacked the bye week and looking forward to Thursday night. All right, so we've kind of dived in to some of the main talking points from the press conference. And Tony Ellie actually did touch on some of the first years too and who has been impressed on you know, talking about Delaney Crawford, how he's special with ball in his heads, how it talked about you know, Trey McDonald, a linebacker first year that, you know, is getting some more reps in the one because it's so thin at linebacker at some points, talking, describing him as violent, that he just needs to add a little bit more weight. Talking about Taro Jones working through a power hour where he is heavily in a weight program right now to try to get his body right for college football. So there's a lot to like in those first years. And obviously we know a few of the first years are already on the field right now. Will Betridge is the starting place kicker. You see Stevie Bracey. Uh, has also been a huge participant in the special teams game. We're going to look at the depth chart because you'll be seeing him, his name on the depth chart for the first time this season. Obviously, we talked about Sean Wilson being on the depth chart. We talked about offensive lineman Mikhail Boley getting his first start and still on the depth chart, and also Houston Curry making an appearance. So a lot of these guys from the 2022 class are making names for themselves, and the staff has been really impressed with their mentality and work ethic. So we're going to have a deeper story on that about the first years on Thursday on Oahu's 24-7. So watch out for that story as well. But let's move on to the depth chart. I already alluded that Bracey is on the depth chart for the first time this season. So here is the depth chart. Tell you kind of see what the um, big changes on there are. If you look on the offensive side of the ball, there aren't really any big changes there. They're all pretty much guys that we are – reasonably expected to see there's no big changes at wide receiver there's no big changes in the offensive line group no changes at wide receiver now billy camp is on the depth chart he's been on the depth chart every week even when he's not expected to play so that is something that we've come to know however tony elliott on monday said that he is expected to participate um he did not play against louisville after that ankle injury against Duke, and obviously he missed against Syracuse due to an illness. So Billy Camp should be available against Georgia Tech this week, which will be great because he is definitely a guy that is being missed on this Virginia offense. So he will certainly be a great addition and will lighten the load on Keaton Thompson. You know, we've seen Keaton be a big factor on this offense. Do we wish maybe he would get a jet sweep or two and maybe do a little bit more? Sure. But he has had several snaps for Virginia, and sometimes those drops might be connected to tiredness or if, when you have so many so many depth um, issues there at wide receiver. Although Demi Starling has also been getting some snaps there at wide receiver, which was great to see against Louisville. Uh, he, he graded out really well, and uh, I would expect Starling to have more reps at that position moving forward as well. So that is the offense. Nothing new there. Pretty much standard. On defense, that is where there are some changes. Now, if you look at nose tackle, you'll see Jameer Carter is your starter. That's, he's been number one there for a while now. Now, at number two, that's usually Devontae Davis. And it's usually Devontae or, Devontae Davis or Olu, Ola, Ola. But now, Agunle is now right behind Jameer Carter. And Devontae Davis is third in that rotation. So that is the big change. A defensive tackle, Ben Smiley, is still above Aaron Famui. Remember, Aaron Famui did not start against Louisville, and he sat off for most of that first half because of those penalties against Duke. So that still is the same from the two depth charts. So we'll see when Aaron Famui will be entering the game. Against Louisville, he didn't enter until the second half. Moving forward, you'll see Stevie Bracey is at Mike. So Nick Jackson is not 100%. Josh Ahern is not expected to play, although he is on the depth chart. James Jackson, Hunter Stewart, Deshaun Perry, and Stevie Bracey are all expected to factor in this game. Not only is it because Josh Ahern is out, 
but also because Nick Jackson is not 100%, so he can't take the load as much. So it's going to be an interesting matchup there. And I'll talk about matchups a little bit more after the break when we kind of dissect the Georgia Tech game moving forward. But that is going to be an area that we're going to be focusing on on the field is how the linebackers handle Georgia Tech. Again, we'll, we'll dive into the matchups there after the break. Now, Deshaun Perry is an interesting one because although he's listed a linebacker a few weeks ago, the staff said that they had to move him at the bandit position because they needed more depth at that position. Coach Wardzinski did say that their plan is still to move Deshaun Perry around. He's got the speed that they would like to utilize in that position. So I could see him be out wide at defensive end, but I also can see him being moved at that linebacker position. So those are the big changes there. Now, the only other thing is Cohen King is back in the depth chart. He seems to have worked back from that tear MCL. So he is back. It's he says uh, he said on Tuesday that it, he was feeling the best that he's felt since August. So we'll see how much Cohen King will factor in there. He's listed behind Lex Long and it's written as Cohen King or Donovan Johnson. So that's your offense and defense. And there's no changes on special teams. Everything is pretty much status quo when it comes to that. Like I said, the big injuries of note that Tony Elliott mentioned on Monday were Nick Jackson. He's not going to be available. Well, he's going to be available, but he probably will not be having that workload that we're used to seeing from him. Plus Josh Ahern is out and that Billy Kemp is expected to play. So those are the big personnel news that we have. There are a couple other guys like Jonas Sanker was uh, banged up towards the coming into the bye week. Mike Collins was a little banged up coming into the bye week. So there are a lot of guys that were a little banged up coming into the bye week. So we'll see how much they will have um, as much as far as workload on Thursday night. So now we're going to dive in after the break. We're going to dive more into the game specific preview where we look at Georgia Tech, where the Yellow Jackets are currently in their season with their new interim coach, Brent Key, and we'll see how the matchup looks like for Virginia. So stay tuned. And welcome back to the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie French, Julie for Wahoo's 24 7. And we've been previewing the game against Georgia Tech, Virginia, still looking for their first ACC win, while Georgia Tech seems to have new life since Jeff Collins was fired and Brent Key has taken over the keys to the program. Seems like the team is executing better and have a little more passion for the game. And they will face off with each other on Thursday night in Atlanta, Georgia. The kickoff is slated at 7.30 p.m. and the game is set to be televised on ESPN. Now, Virginia is coming in after losing three straight games, including the road game to Duke and also at home game against Louisville. And you guys who have been listening to this podcast um, know that I thought the first half of the season was pretty favorable to Virginia. I will honestly admit that I thought this was going to be a game where Virginia was going to enter possibly five and one. I thought they uh, thought the first loss would come against Louisville. Obviously that is not the case. There was a lot more rebuild to this team um, and a lot more transition to a first year head coach and obviously more transition on this offense that many expected, even with the offensive line being new. I think a lot of people thought this uh, would be a different return from the bye week, but Virginia still has games to play and Virginia still has a chance to turn this season around. They have to start though on Thursday. So we spoke to a couple of players, including safety Antonio Clary and defensive end bandit Chico Bennett. Both both guys are familiar with Georgia Tech in different ways. Obviously, Bennett transferred from Georgia Tech to Virginia last year. But Antonio Clary has a unique perception of starting quarterback Jem Sims. They both came from the same high school and they both played with each other. So Jeff Sims is going to be a big battle for this Virginia defense. They didn't face Malik Cunningham against Louisville. That was going to be a kind of a tester or kind of a test in that self because of how Malik Cunningham uses his legs. With Jeff Sims, you have the same type of athletic, dynamic quarterback. He is strong. He can be accurate. He's got good wide receivers to throw to. Big, strong, big wide receivers. Let me just point that one out. 
but he also can run the ball well. And what Georgia Tech does in offense, they sometimes have those direct to quarterback runs. So this is going to be a good test for this Virginia defense who has had flashes of stopping the run pretty effectively. And we can point to that game against Syracuse where they stopped Sean Tucker from running away with the game. So this will be a big test. And Antonio Clary and Chico Bennett both say that this offense that they're about to face has some good weapons. Yeah, Jeff, that's my guy. I talk to him every day. Um, I was actually just talking to him the other day. But, yeah, that's my guy. What does he bring at the quarterback position? What makes him uh, a threat? Athleticism. I mean, he can throw and then he can beat you on the ground too. So, I mean, it just shows like <laughs> – it just shows that he's uh, he can run, make big plays with his feet, and then also with his arm. He has a big arm, so and he can make tough throws as well. Um, yeah, he's just I think he's a I think he's really good quarterback. You know, Jeff's um, Jeff's a big big dude. You know, he has a great physique, um, and he's he's a good quarterback. You know, he's run, uh, he can run, he can do all that, uh, make the make the necessary throws. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a good dude. I mean, they just they're just attacking style offense. Uh, they want to get the ball to the slot. Running backs a, a good player as well. And then Jeff, you know, making things happen with his feet or his arm. I think it's, um, it's great confidence, you know, with with adversity that's faced that they faced. You know, it's easy to uh, to let Mother Nature take over and and lose every other game. But you know, they've shown a uh, fight, and so I think that's good for them. But um, shoot, we're gonna show that we got fight as well. Um, they're playing with, uh, with a chip on their shoulder. They're playing with that fire. Uh, obviously, uh, the season didn't start like they wanted it to do. Uh, but yeah, they're playing with that chip on their shoulder. They got a different fire about themselves. Um, they're, they're, they got two big uh, wins, so they're going to be coming in hot, and we got to be ready for it. Now, when you look at this Georgia Tech team and you look at this Virginia team, statistically, what you see are two teams that are pretty even. In total offense, Virginia averages 356.8 yards per game. Georgia Tech, 329.7 yards per game. Passing offense, Virginia, 227.2 yards per game compared to Georgia Tech, 178.8 uh, yards per game. Rushing offense, Virginia, 129.7 yards per game. Georgia Tech, 150.8 yards per game. Scoring, Virginia, 17.8 points per game. Georgia Tech, 17.3 uh, points per game. So a lot of things here are pretty similar. Um, the only thing that Georgia Tech does not do as much as Virginia at this time is turnovers. Right now, Virginia has not done well keeping the ball. UVA has played six games this season, and they've had two or more turnovers in every one of them. And in three of those six games, the Cavaliers has had three turnovers. So that's where things are separate between both of those games. Now, we can say that the first team to pass 21 points is probably going to be the winner, it seems like. That should be your marker of how this game will go. Who are some of the names to watch when it comes to this Georgia Tech offense? Now, when you look at the offense, we already mentioned Jeff Sims. He's, again, he's a good dual-threat quarterback. He's in his third season with the Yellow Jackets. He is 104 out of 177 with a 58.8% completion percentage. He's had five passing touchdowns to just two interceptions, and he's rushed for 287 yards on 84 attempts an average of 3.4 yards per carry. Now, what they have is some good wide receiver targets. I think one of the ones that I'm going to be looking at when I watch this game is going to be EJ Jenkins. He's 6'7", 243, and he is a wide receiver that looks like a tight end. Now, if you've been watching UVA football, you know how much tight ends have caused issues for Virginia, especially in the last few years and especially this season. If you look at ODU, they struggled to contain the tight end. Now, when you have a guy like that, and you have a couple other guys that are pretty talented at wide receiver, including wide receiver Nate McCullum, which is their leading receiver with 29 receptions for 283 yards, you're going to see some mismatches that they're going to try to use in the middle of the field. They're going to try to use some matchups against linebackers. That's why I touched on so much on the linebackers coming into this section of the story and the personnel issues where I kind of hammered down that they're thin at linebacker because that's where I think one of the matchup issues that Virginia is going to face against this Georgia Tech offense. What I would do if I was Georgia Tech is I would attack the safeties on post routes. That is probably one of the biggest things that I think Virginia will be has a liability 
in this game. And the reason why is because of Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson is not 100% healthy. How much can he play? So you're going to look to James Jackson. You're going to look at other guys. Is Deshaun Perry going to fill that row as that spy? Who is going to be that guy? Um, and I know all everyone's going to talk about we need to pass rush better. We need to, something that they didn't do against Louisville. And they, they struggled against Duke as well. But you have to be smart when you're down one of your best tacklers in the ACC and one of your best overall best defenders on your team. Because how are you going to do, are you going to drop a safety down? What, what is your, who's going to be your spy? And at that point, you're where, how is your, a lot of the linebackers struggled in coverages in those games. So that is going to be the big battle right there. And I could see them utilizing gays like McCullum and EJ Jenkins in those roles to kind of create those matchup nightmares. Now on the defensive side for Georgia Tech, a name to know is linebacker Charlie Thomas. Um, he has 10 tackles. Last season, he had 70 tackles, 10 tackles for a loss, and three sacks. This year, he already has 52 tackles, five and a half for a loss, and one sack through six games this season. He is fourth in the ACC in solo tackles and six in total sacks and four for interceptions. Thomas has three games with double-digit tackles, and I think he's going to be the guy that you're going to see him really – try to stop Brendan Armstrong's mobility. He's going to be that. If you look at how Illinois played defensively, I could see Georgia Tech kind of mirroring what Illinois did. So that's going to be, if you remember the Illinois game, that's how I think this matchup defensively, what they will try to copy. They've got some good physical DBs. So this is that George, Jeff Collins and his staff were able to go into the transfer portal and bolster that position. So that's going to be a battle to also look at. I think Charlie Thomas is going to be the key player defensively for Georgia Tech. And this offense needs to do better on execution if you're Virginia. You cannot turn over the ball, Specific, not especially in the red zone. And one thing for Virginia is finding that consistency. This Georgia Tech team is pretty efficient right now. Uh, like I said, they don't turn over the ball as much. So they're going to take advantage of that. And again, this, this is honestly looks like the first team to reach 21 points wins the game. That's what numbers are showing. That's what stats are showing. So it'll be a close game. Virginia has had some tough games in Atlanta. So it's going to be a close one now because of some of the things I talked about, because of the lack of consistency from Virginia, I still can't pick Virginia to win on the road in Atlanta knowing the injuries that they have at the linebacker position and how some positions are a little banged up. It's hard to pick Virginia on the road against a team that is coming into the game with some good wins against Duke and against Pitt. So I am picking Georgia Tech over Virginia. This was a game that I had penciled in. I thought this was a, a not an easy win for Virginia. No game is easy. But I had thought Virginia was going to beat Georgia Tech during the preseason when I was looking at the schedule. Right now, until Virginia can play four quarters through all phases of the game, it's hard to pick Virginia. Maybe the, maybe the bye week is what they needed. But until we see consistency on the field, it's going to be hard to pick Virginia against a team that has all the momentum coming into the matchup. So again, I think the, first, the team that gets to 21 points first is probably going to be the likely winner. And at this time, I still think it will be Georgia Tech over Virginia, just uh, with uh, some of the injury concerns that Virginia has heading into the game. So thanks again for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate all of you that have supporting. We have grown the podcast quite a bit since that first episode back in February. So I'm really happy and really appreciative to all of you that listen and follow me on Twitter and also follow me on Wahoo's 24-7. The site has also grown tremendously since it came on board last August. And I can't thank you enough for subscribing or listening or just being a part of uh, my time here at Virginia. So thank you to all of you for uh, making my time here in Virginia so great. So we will be back here either Friday or Saturday. I'm not quite sure when I'll be able to get a game recap. I don't want to wait till Monday for a game recap episode. So I'll be posted here on Friday afternoon 
or on Saturday morning. And then we will have a special recruiting episode on Monday because it's going to be a big recruiting weekend for the Virginia Cavaliers when they're back home hosting Miami next Saturday. We already have some teasing of some visitors that will likely be on grounds for that game and also the game against North Carolina. We will already have a ongoing list of visitors confirmed for those games on Wahoo's 24-7 for our subscribers. And we also have the first official visitor locked in for the first weekend of December. All that information is on our Wahoo's 24-7 message boards, and it is pinned to the top of the message board threads. So again, thanks again, everyone, for listening. And again, we'll be right back here either Friday or Saturday. And we'll be right back here on Monday with some more recruiting scoops. So thanks again, and hope you guys have a good rest of your week.